lumbrical bar splint. These are the materials you will need to fabricate the lumbrical bar splint. You will need a deep electric water bath, a hole puncher, a piece of easy form material, a spatula, and a pair of scissors. Place patient's hand palm down on a flat surface. Next, mark an A by the proximal end of the second MCP joint. Mark another A by the proximal end of the fifth MCP joint. Then mark a B by the distal end of the fifth MCP joint and the distal end of the second MCP joint. Mark the first web space by the first metacarpal. Mark just proximal to the second PIP crease. Then mark just proximal to the fifth PIP crease. These are your anatomical landmarks. Make a line connecting the two A's. and make another line connecting the two B's. Connect the two dots above the A's, making an oval shape connecting the other marks you made. Trace the pattern onto the easy form material. After the material has been heated, cut out the pattern. Cut along the oval line, making sure to cut along the pen marks so that you're not left with any ink on the finished splint. Take the hole puncher and punch a hole at the ends of each of the lines. Cut along both lines to create the bar segment of the lumbrical bar splint. Slide the proximal end of the splint over the patient's fingers so that it rests on the dorsal metacarpal surface. The distal end of the splint should rest across the dorsal surface of the proximal phalanges. Lateral edges of the splint should be bent bolarly to reinforce the splint. Gently slide the splint onto the patient's hand. Make sure the MCP joints are cleared. Instruct the patient to make a fist, thereby ensuring that they have increased functional use of their hand. Note how this splint prevents claw hand deformity. Specifically, it blocks MCP hyperextension and keeps fingers slightly flexed at the MCP joints. Note how the splint is rolled up by the first web space to allow for thumb opposition and flexion. The bar should cover the palmar aspect of the MCP joints.